ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चैव नष्ट प्रायशो भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ट की कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोपा कुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नम नमाम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांता स्वामी नितनामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिणे ओम ज्ञान तिमंद से ज्ञान विनाशनाथ चक्षुर तस्म श्री गुरु जन्म गुह्यम भगवत यो नर सा दुख ग्रामुच्य All right. Any volunteers who would like to read translation of Upper? Can I read? Yes. Whoever carefully recites the mysterious appearances of the Lord with devotion in the morning and in the evening gets relief from all miseries of life. Upper by His Divine Grace, Sri Bhakti Vidanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. In the Bhagavad Gita. the personality of godhead has declared that anyone who knows the principles of transcendental birth and activities of the lord will go back to godhead after being relieved from this material tabernacle tabernacle so simply knowing factually the mysterious way of the lord's incarnation in this material world can liberate one from material bondage therefore the birth and activities of the lord as manifested by him for the welfare of the people in general are not ordinary they are mysterious and only by those who carefully try to go deep into the matter by spiritual devotion is the mystery discovered thus one gets liberation from material bondage it is advised therefore that one who simply recites this chapter of bhagavatam describing the appearance of the lord in different incarnations in sincerity and devotion can have insight into the birth and activities of the lord the very word vimukti or liberation indicates that the lord's birth and activities are all transcendental otherwise simply by reciting them one could not attain liberation they are therefore mysterious and those who do not follow the prescribed regulations of devotional service are not entitled to enter into the mysteries of his births and activities hari krishna hari krishna i would like to share some points from this i can summarize uh, what prabhupad is trying to say here so so first of all he's explaining that uh, the appearance of the lord is mysterious and it can only be understood by those who are practicing sincerely uh, devotional life that is doing very uh regular sadhana and uh, doing it with love and devotion uh, are able to get into these mysteries of the lord's appearance um 
actually i'm reminded of the verse from bhagavad gita janma karma ch neva divyam uh, my janma and karma my birth and activities are transcendental uh, evam yog neeti bhak hold on janma karma ch me divyam evam yog neeti tatvah tyaktva deham puna janma neeti mam eti so arjuna so janma karma ch me divyam yeah so similar to what uh, krishna is saying in that verse that upon leaving this body uh takes uh he does not take uh his birth in this material world but he attains my eternal abode o arjuna so similarly in this uh shloka as well uh prabhupad is actually reassuring us with the same um with the same uh concept that uh, you know one can get relief from all the miseries of life and can actually get liberation so that's all i had to share yeah very important shloka from bhagavad gita kind of making philosophical connections there and then prabhupad is mentioning here the one who simply recites this chapter of bhagavatam describing the appearance of the lord in different incarnations in sincerity and devotion can have insight into the birth and activities of the lord so in that shloka krishna is saying that one who knows it doesn't have to take birth again and one who recites this with sincerity and devotion prabhupada is saying can get an insight to the birth and activities it's an important chapter here to recite so even if we can recite the translation of this chapter this is very very nice all right uh anybody else would like to share some points from here chaitanya prabhu nirbhay prabhu natasha mata ji suresh prabhu dipika mata ji i have a question yeah so just by reading this chapter you have an insight of the lord yes insight of the lord means of the birth and activities of the lord because in this chapter you remember earlier we were discussing how there are different uh, uh, <coughs> avatars of the lord so the different avatars of the lord they are appearing that is the uh, appearance of lord and then how he is doing the activities of uh, up- solving a particular purpose for which he has taken avatar those purposes are mentioned so some insight is there and of course as we read forward we will get more and more in depth knowledge then when we read this chapter again then it will be with more and more understanding and deeper realization so right now what we can do we can be sincere and we can recite it with devotion that will help okay yeah okay thank you thank you All right. So, anybody wants to make any points? Shall read once again translation. Whoever carefully recites the mysterious appearances of the Lord with devotion in the morning and in the evening gets relief from all miseries of life. So, can anybody tell who is speaking this shloka? Is it being spoken by? Uh, uh sukhdev so goswami or is it being spoken so, by narad so, narad so, i think it's a, still the sut muni is saying right three times hari bol for nirmala mata ji hari bol hari bol hari bol hari bol you are absolutely correct it's neither sukhdev goswami nor narad muni it is sut goswami good Yes, Nirmal, I think you were saying something. No, I wasn't. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Great. So I, I think, have a question. Uh, yes. So you say just chanting in the morning and night will refit, like, relieve you from miseries of life, right? Yeah. So then, what if you commit an offense? No, no, no. You, you have to. You have to not commit offense. The oh, per- okay. 
the, when you are reading this, that means you are anyway is not going to get a. This is just like saying uh, eating dirt from the from the trash. What if we eat dirt from the trash? Why will you eat dirt from the trash? You have some so many nice things to eat. So why will you eat dirt? So similarly, when you have nice things to talk about, why will you commit offense? Not needed, right? So you never ever commit an offense. Not needed. That will help us not to commit offense. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. We are doing our chanting. We are doing uh, association of devotees. So with all these things, the tendency of committing offenses goes away. Okay. All right. We'll go next. Anybody would like to recite the Sanskrit? I can try. Okay. Etadrupam Bhagavato. Etadrupam Bhagavato. Yarupasya Chidatmanaha. Yarupasya Chidatmanaha. Maya Gunaid Virachitam. Maya Gunaid Virachitam. Mahadadi Bhir Atmani. Mahadadi Bhir Atmani. Any volunteers would like to read the translation and proper? I can read it. Yes, <clears throat> the conception of the Virat universal, Virat universal form, form of the Lord is appearing in the material world is imaginary. It, it is to enable the less intelligent and neophyte to adjust to the idea of Lord's having form, but factually, the Lord have no material form or part. The concession of the Lord, not as the Vishwa Rupa or the Virat Rupa is particularly not mentioned along with the various incarnation of the Lord, because all the incarnation of the Lord mentioned above are transcendental and there is there is not a tinge of materialism in their bodies. There is no difference between the body and self as there is conditional soul. The Vidar group is conceived for those who are just neophyte worshippers. For them, the material Vidar group is presented and it will be explained in the second canto in the in the Virat Rup material manifestation of different planets have been conceived as a high leg, hand, etc. Actually, all such descriptions are for the neophyte. The description cannot, the neophyte cannot conceive of any anything beyond matter. The material conception of the Lord is not counted in the list of the factual form. As a Paramatma or the Super Soul, the Lord is within each and every material form, even within the atom. But the outward material form is but an imagination, both the Lord and for the living being. The present form of the conditional soul are also not factual. The conclusion is that the material conception of body of Lord is Virat, is imaginary, both the Lord and the living being, a living spirit and have original spiritual body, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we discussed this once before, that how the Virat Rup, which is talked about at various places in the scriptures, 
in the bhagavatam even in bhagavad gita actually the vishwaru virat roop talked about right so that is <clears throat> different it is not mentioned here when we are talking about avatars avatars are coming for particular purpose their body is transcendental that is the spiritual body on the other end vishwaru virat roop is giving an idea of the lord power to those who have a very material conception of life so most people they are not very highly evolved they want to be attracted to the beautiful form of the spiritual body of the lord and they cannot conceive or understand this so for them it is said oh you know all these planets they are the limbs of the lord all this is you know uh, sun is the eye of the lord for example moon is so by that and by seeing the material things they can get glimpse so oh, okay sun such a huge body of heat and light is just a small part of the body of the lord so then they feel oh, okay okay then that means lord must be very great so they have to get an idea so that is what is uh, the purpose of uh, the scriptures explaining the forms of the lord in this way but this is for neophytes uh, not for advanced devotees advanced devotees they are attracted to the beautiful form of the lord because they know it is not material it is spiritual it is transcendent every <clears throat> speck which is connected to krishna is actually spiritual and they understand the importance and the beauty and appreciate it anybody else would like to share any point here okay we'll try to keep reading who will read the next one okay i'll read yatha na bhasi megha go yatha na bhasi megha go rinur va parthivo nile rinur va parthivo nile एवं दृष्टरी दृश्यत्वम एवं दृष्टरीश्यत्वम आरोपि आरोपितम अबुद्धि हि आरोपि अबुद्धि हि any volunteers would like to read the translation and purport Isha you want to read the translation? <clears throat> yeah. Clouds and dust are carried by the air but less intelligent persons say that the sky is cloudy and the air is dirty. Similarly, they also implant material bodily concept conceptation conceptions conceptions on the spirit self okay you want to read the purport yeah i'll try it is further confirmed herein that with our material eyes and senses we cannot see the lord who is all spirit we cannot even detect the spiritual spark which exists within the material body of the living being we look to the outward covering of our of the body or subtitle mind of the living being we cannot see the spiritual spark within the body so okay. we have to ex- so so let just talking about these <coughs> two three pat- lines this is very clear clear right everybody understood this right Isha, you understood? Basically, it is mentioned. It is further confirmed that our mati- with our material eyes and senses, we cannot see the Lord, right? Lord is all spirit, so He can't be seen by these material eyes, and we cannot even detect spiritual spark which exists within the material body of the living being. So, if there is a living being, something someone says, okay, so this is. Uh, a uh, boy or this is a cat or a dog just go and see the soul within the body so we cannot see it right because our eyes are material 
and soul is spiritual. So we can't see the Lord, we can't even see the, the, the soul. Is it making sense, Isha? Yeah. Okay. And then here it's mentioned, we look to the outward covering of the body or subtle mind of the living being, but we cannot see the spiritual spark within the body. So we can see the covering. Like for example, we wear a suit or a tie or a coat or a pant. Uh, similarly, the soul bears this body. So we can see this body, but we cannot see the soul. So we have to accept Hare Krishna. Somebody sharing something? So we have to accept the living being's presence by the presence of his gross body. Similarly, those who want to see the Lord with their present material eyes or with the material senses are advised to meditate on the gigantic external feature called the Virat Roop. So people cannot see God, right? So this is how they are told to meditate when they are in the neophyte stage. They don't really have an understanding or appreciation for the spiritual form of the Lord or Krishna. So then they are <laughs> advised that, okay, you meditate on this Virat Roop. For instance, when a particular gentleman goes in this car, in his car, which can be seen very easily, we identify the car with the man within the car. When the president goes out in the particular car, we say, there is the president. For the time being, we identify the car with the president. Similarly, less intelligent man, men who want to see God immediately without necessary qualification are shown first the gigantic material cosmos as the form of the Lord. Although the Lord is within and without. The clouds in the sky and the blue of the sky are better appreciated in this connection. Although the bluish tint of the sky and the sky itself are different, we conceive of the color of the sky as blue. But that is general conception for the layman only. Okay. So basically here it's talked about, like for example, you have a car and you use, let's say, Honda Odyssey. And then you are going in Honda Odyssey and somebody sees your number plate. And then they say, oh, okay. Let's say Isha is going in the car. So they'll say, oh, that is Isha. Now he, they have not even seen Isha. They are seeing their car. But because she is sitting in the car, she is, you know, having a car with that number, they are saying, oh, this is actually Isha. So similarly, they cannot see the Lord, but when the Virat Roop is, uh, <coughs> is uh, <laughs> explained to them, they can actually see the different elements of the Virat Roop. So by that, they can have an appreciation of the Lord. Does it make sense? Yeah, but I have a question. Yes. What is the nep thing? Neophyte? Yeah. Neophyte means one who is new, one who doesn't know much about uh, spiritual life. <clears throat> like we all are new. We don't have much idea, right? Some of us may be having a little bit idea now. But uh, a neophyte is person who is, you know, having not much idea. So we are also for the most part neophyte only, but at least we are in association with devotees and we have some little idea. And uh, some people don't even have any association of devotees. They are totally like having no clue who is Krishna or who is God. So they are like neophytes. Okay? Yeah. What's the second stage? Where, where are you reading from? No, but like you say there's like the first step, like the new flight thing, right? Yeah, so first, first uh, four steps are neophyte only. So first step is to have Shraddha. Shraddha means having a little faith, little understanding. Then second is association of devotees. Second is association of devotees. Then third is Bhajan Kriya. Bhajan Kriya means you're chanting every day. Now you have started chanting, you are attending the reading sessions, you are going to the temple for doing the kirtans, and then you are every day praying to Krishna. So that is like third stage. 
and then the fourth stage is anarth nivritti anarth nivritti means all the bad habits all the things in your mind of hurting others talking bad about others uh, um things that you do you know are wrong which you want to do you like to do all these anarthas they go away this is the fourth step so all these first four steps are in the neophyte stage only okay yeah thank you is that all right anybody else <clears throat> any points you want to make okay we'll go to the next so i i guess everybody is focused on reading subsequent shlokas nobody is sharing anything today anybody would like to read the sanskrit can i read yeah please go ahead अतः परम यद अव्यक्तम् अव्यक्तम् अव्युदा गुणाः निष्ठितम् अव्युदा गुणाः not very clear i i don't know if it's clear to others i am not able to understand actually i can't either okay yeah i think uh, the voice some maybe internet issue i can read prabhu ji okay yes ma'am well, maybe you can read the translation again if you don't mind you sure prabhu ji beyond this cross conception of form is another subtle conception of form which is without formal shape and is unseen unheard and unmanifest the living being has his form beyond this subtlety otherwise he could not have repeated words purport as the gross cosmic manifestation is conceived as the gigantic body of the lord so also there is the conception of his subtle form which is simply realized without being seen heard or manifested but in fact all these cross or subtle conceptions of the body are in relation with the living beings the living being has a spiritual form beyond this gross material or subtle psychic existence the gross body and psychic functions cease to act as soon as the living being leaves the visible gross body in fact we say that the living being has gone away because he is unseen and unheard even when the gross body is not acting when the living being is in sound sleep we know that he is within the body by his breathing so the living being's passing away from the body does not mean that there is no existence of the living soul it is there otherwise how can he repeat his births again and again the con the conclusion is that that the lord is eternally existent in his transcendental form which is neither gross nor subtle like that of the living being his body is never to be compared with the gross and subtle bodies of the living being all such conceptions of god's body are imaginary the living being has his eternal spiritual form which is conditioned only by his material contamination hari krishna prabhu ji hari krishna 
So everything is clear or should we read this once again? Could you like tell me the summary? Tell me the summary. Okay. So anybody can tell the summary? Prabhuji, it's better you explain. It's very technical. It's very technical. Let, let's read once more. Okay. So okay. We'll, we'll, we'll all try to understand this. Beyond this gross conception of the form is another subtle conception of form which is without formal shape and is unseen, unheard, and unmanifest. The living being has his form beyond this subtlety. Otherwise, he could not have repeated births. So, <clears throat> currently we have a body, right? We can uh, see each other's body. We can perceive it, right? But actually, this is the gross body, right? And then there is a subtle body, which is the soul, which also has form. But it doesn't have any material shape, right? And it can't be seen. It can't be perceived by normal senses. That is the meaning of it is spiritual, right? Normally, our body has gross body has five elements earth water fire air ether ether means the space right so earth water fire air but the subtle body it is not something which can be perceived in the same way this Isha, you want to say something? What? Do you want to share something? No, I didn't say anything. Okay. So, <clears throat> the living body has his for form beyond this subtlety. Otherwise, he could not have repeated births. So, so living entity, the soul, also has its own existence. And the soul has its own spiritual form. That is what is men being mentioned here. And Prabhupada in the purport is saying, gross cosmic manifestation is conceived as a gigantic body of the Lord. So this is true for living entity and this is true for the Lord also. That the Lord, he does not have any material form, but he has a spiritual form. Right? <clears throat> So this cosmic manifestations, which can be grossly perceived by the living entity in the Virat Rupa or the Vishwa Rupa can be explained in that way. So they will read the whole purport, then we'll discuss. As the gross cosmic manifestation is conceived as the gigantic body of the Lord, so also there is the conception of his subtle form, which is simply realized without being seen, heard or manifested. But in fact, all these gross or subtle conceptions of the body are in relation with the living beings. The living being has his spiritual form beyond this gross material or subtle psychic existence. The gross body and psychic function cease to act as soon as the living being leaves the visible gross body. In fact, we say that the living being has gone away because he is unseen and unheard. Even when the gross body is not acting, when the living being is in sound sleep, we know that he is within the body by his breathing. So the living beings passing away from the body does not mean that there is no existence of the living soul. I'll read this last line again. Even when the gross body is not acting, when the living being is sound sleep, we know that he is within the body, but he is by his breathing. So the living beings passing away from the body does not mean that there is no existence of the living soul. It is there. Otherwise, how can he repeat his words again and again? The conclusion is that Lord is eternally existent in his transcendental form which is neither gross 
nor subtle like that of living being his body is never to be compared to the gross and subtle bodies of the living being all such conception of god's body are imaginary the living being has his eternal spiritual form which is conditioned only by his material contamination so in short i will just share what i understood and other devotees can jump in and share the living being has a form which is spiritual which is actually the form of the soul and that is different from the gross material form of this body that is <clears throat> the form of the soul is the one which is spiritual and when the body is uh, is <clears throat> sleeping or resting or whatever it is doing the soul is still there but when the person dies the soul passes right on the other hand krishna's body krishna's form krishna's uh, transcendental <clears throat> body of all the avatars that is not the same as that of the living entity the living entity gross body and subtle body are different but for lord it is the same it is all spiritual he does not take gross body of the material element of the earth water fire air ether in fact sometimes mayavadis they 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 say that krishna's body is actually <laughs> material illusory but that is not true the scriptures don't <laughs> say that ईश्वर परम कृष्ण सच्चिदनंद विग्रह अनाथ राधर गोविंद सर्व कारण कारण सो हु इज ईश्वर हां इवन ऑल द इनकारनेशंस और अवतारस हु केम दे ऑल हैव ट्रांसेंडेंटल बॉडी इट इज नॉट दैट ही एक्सेप्टेड सम बॉडी नॉट नॉट <clears throat> uh, material body like us so that is the difference between the lord and us okay anybody would like to share any other points from this okay we'll keep going guy forward prabhu ji uh, like in bhagavad gita chapter 4 uh, verse 6 uh, uh, i think it is explained like like god's uh, body's uh, transcendental because when arjuna asked uh, god about like how do you remember you know uh, and uh, you know how did you give this knowledge to vivisman then he explained in six verse about uh, and uh, uh, amogila prabhu also explained this so yeah yes, we just Papa. reading that and it is there very nice thank you for sharing that's true all right so we'll go to this next shloka 1333 yatri me sad asad rupe yatri me sad asad rupe pratisiddhe sv samveda pratisiddhe sv samveda avidya yatmani krite avidya yatmani krite iti tad brahma darshanan iti tad brahma darshanam any volunteers would like to read the translation purport okay i'll quickly read whenever a person experiences by self realization that both the gross and subtle bodies have nothing to do with the pure self at that time he sees himself as well as the lord so this is what we need to realize when a person experiences by self realization that 
both gross and subtle bodies have nothing to do with the pure self so you have a pure self that is different from the body so <clears throat> gross and subtle bodies have nothing to do with who we are most people are attached to the body only most people are actually attached to the gross body only they think there is this body then some of them they yes. are in the mental what's level the thinking body? about what what's a subtle body subtle body means mind intelligence those who are conscious of they who are only thinking in the mental level okay maybe i can give you a crude example here let's say somebody gets pleasure by material things let's say eating for example right eating is satisfying the gross body so they are <clears throat> more in the gross body sense subtle body <clears throat> more in the mind they are thinking how we'll get pride prestige you know name fame so that is more <clears throat> to the uh, mind intelligence and ego they are getting inflated so they are more in the subtle body so both are dangerous but <clears throat> what i am telling is the difference between the two um, but most people are <clears throat> in both they are they are actually bodily conscious from both ways but when we come in touch with devotees when we are actually understanding no this body and soul they are not what we are we are actually the sorry the body and the mind is not what we are we are the spirit soul so then <clears throat> we start acting in that way so we see so many examples of prabhupada disciples and great devotees who had such severe dangerous life threatening diseases which would actually lead to depression uh, pain so many miseries but actually when they got the diseases they were not at the bodily level they were actually so much into the spiritual level that they could face it with complete happiness they did whatever was necessary as a treatment but if the treatment was not possible uh, they it, it did not actually deter them at all in fact their services to krishna increased even more that is because they are not at the level of the gross or the subtle body they are at the level of the soul they are self realized they are actually experiencing krishna so here it, that's why it is great at that time he sees himself as well as the lord so there was a uh, disciple of shila prabhupad his holiness bhakti teeth maharaj famous very very famous he has so many disciples and when he was leaving his body he was there just sitting and different people from different uh, organizations some muslims some christians all of them coming he was giving guidance to nelson mandela to muhammad ali all these people were coming and taking guidance from him bhakti teet swami very very uh, advanced <clears throat> and he was in so much pain but he was happy smiling all the time and in his association other people were getting transformed then there was a mata ji <clears throat> she was also similar situation last stage of her life and she was having no strength even to pick up a book and then somebody gave her gave her a kind of an ipad or a kindle or something and then she was <laughs> just clicking and reading shri prabhupada's book even at that situation and she was so happy anybody who was coming in touch with her they were actually getting so much inspired so this is how these personalities who uh, served their guru and served krishna they could actually be with krishna at the last moment so they will quickly read the purport any volunteer who would like to read I have a question. Isha, let's just finish this, then we'll take your question. Okay. 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 <clears throat> Anybody would like to read the puppet? Okay, I'll read. No one's reading. I can. Yes, Dipika Mataji, you read. 
purport. The difference between self-realization and material illusion is to know that the temporary or illusory impositions of material energy in the shape of gross and subtle bodies are superficial coverings of the self. The coverings take place due to ignorance. Such coverings are never effective in the person of the personality of Godhead. Knowing this convincingly is called liberation or seeing the absolute. This means that perfect self-realization is made possible by adoption of godly or spiritual life. Self-realization means becoming indifferent to the needs of the gross and subtle bodies and becoming serious about the activities of the self. The impetus for activities is generated from the self, but such activities become illusory due to ignorance of the real position of the self. By ignorance, self-interest is calculated in terms of the gross and subtle bodies, and therefore a whole set of activities is spoiled, life after life. When, however, one meets the self by proper culture, the activities of the self begin. Therefore, a man who is engaged in the activities of the self is called Jivan Mukta or liberated person even in the conditioned existence. This perfect stage of self-realization is attained not by artificial means, but under the lotus feet of the Lord who is always transcendental. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that he is present in everyone's heart and from him only all knowledge, remembrance or forgetfulness takes place. When the living being desires to be an enjoyer of material energy, illusionary phenomena, the Lord covers the living being in the mystery of forgetfulness and thus the living being misinterprets the gross bodily and subtle mind to be his own. And by culture of transcendental knowledge, when the living being prays to the Lord for deliverance from the clutches of forgetfulness, the Lord by his causeless mercy removes the living being's illusionary curtain and thus he realizes his own self. He then engages himself in the service of the Lord in his eternal constitutional position, becoming liberated from the conditioned life. All this is executed by the Lord either through his external potency or directly by the internal potency. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So a lot of points here in the translation and purport. Uh, anybody would like to share or highlight some points? Okay, I'll read the translation uh, once again. Whenever a person experiences by self-realization that both gross and subtle bodies have nothing to do with the pure self, at that time he sees himself as well as the Lord. <clears throat> so in first paragraph, purport. Prabhupada has explained the difference between self-realization and material illusion is to know that temporary or illusory impositions of material energy in the shape of gross and subtle bodies are superficial covering of the self. Basically, same thing, you know, that this body is just a superficial covering of the self. This one doesn't understand because of maya. This maya is the illusory energy. The coverings takes place due to ignorance because we are in ignorance, so we don't know. But when knowledge comes, then we are come out of it. We can come out of it. What is that? Tamsoma Jyote. <laughs> Such coverings are never effective in the persons of the personality of Godhead. Krishna does not come under the illusory energy. He doesn't get covered. Knowing this covering convincingly is called liberation or seeing the absolute. So when we are completely realizing these things, then we are actually liberated. Perfectly self-realized. <clears throat> so one can be perfectly self-realized when one is in spiritual life. Self-realization means becoming indifferent to the needs of the gross and subtle bodies and becoming serious about the activities of the self. So our tongue is pulling to go and eat something. Our eyes are pulling to go and you know see something <laughs> which is going to be <clears throat> uh, pleasing. Our ears want to hear you know uh, non-devotional music, and <clears throat> eyes want to see other things other than Krishna. 
taste tongue want to taste all the other things which are not krishna prasadam so all these are uh, pullings of the senses <clears throat> and the subtle lust greed anger and these are subtle things affecting the mind so one who is indifferent who is not affected by these things and who is serious in self realization in the activities of self what is the activity of self activity of the self means the real self the spiritual consciousness source of all the consciousness the spirit soul what does soul needs service to krishna when one is focused in that then that is going to be self realized but if one is ignoring that self interest <clears throat> by ignorance self interest is calculated in terms of gross and subtle bodies and therefore a whole set of activities is spoiled life after life so life after life we are just wasting why because we are not really feeding the self we are not feeding the self what is the food for self hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare <clears throat> when however one meets the self by proper culture the activities of self begin so when one is actually focused on the spiritual growth then that is when the real life begins <clears throat> athato brahma jigyasa when this calling comes what is the absolute truth what is who is krishna what is the self then our human life has actually begun otherwise we are still in animal consciousness only if we are not thinking about this pure spiritual then we are dvipad pashu two legged animal but one who is actually thinking about the self focused on the self really working for the self and is fully realized that person is jivan mukta or liberated person all right that was the first part in the second paragraph prabhupad is saying this perfect stage of self realization is attained not by artificial means but but under the lotus feet of the lord who is always trans so how can one achieve the lotus feet of the lord by going to the representative of the lord the guru and here it is mentioned in the bhagavad gita lord says he is present in everyone's heart and from him only knowledge remembrance forgetfulness takes place so which shloka is this from the bhagavad gita 15.15 prabhu ji 15.15 mata ji can you recite Yes, Prabhu. Sarvasya chaham ridhi sanni vishto matah smritir jnana pohanam cha vedaish cha sarvair aham me vipetyo vedant krit ved vid eva chaham Hare Krishna Prabhu. Three word. Great. Thank you, Mataji. So from me comes remember knowledge or forgetfulness is there in this <coughs> shloka. <coughs> matah smritir jnanam upon us so krishna is seated in every man's heart and him comes all these things when the living being desires to be an enjoyer of material energy illusory phenomena the lord covers the living being in the mystery of forgetfulness and thus living being misinterprets the gross body and subtle mind to be his own self so when we want to enjoy the material energy then krishna just to fulfill our desire give us this body and covers our knowledge by illusory energy maya and we think this body is who we are and by culture of transcendental knowledge when the living being prays to the lord for deliverance from the clutches of forgetfulness the lord by his causeless mercy removes the living beings illusory curtain but let's say if somebody is now in maya but he wants to get transcendental knowledge and he prays to the lord for deliverance prays to the lord for deliverance prays to the lord for deliverance deliverance from where from the clutches of forgetfulness we have forgotten who we are but when we pray to the lord pray by chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare then what happens lord by his causeless mercy removes the illusory energy being curtain and thus he realizes his own self he then engages himself in the service of the lord in his eternal constitutional position 
becoming liberated from conditioned life all this is executed by the lord either through his external potency or directly by internal potency external potency means maya devi she is covering and then internal potency is shrimati radharani so external potency is durga devi maya covering so <clears throat> when external potency acts one actually forgets about krishna and goes away from krishna but when internal potency acts if one forgets krishna then that forgetfulness also brings him closer to krishna because actually he doesn't forget krishna he just forgets that krishna is god for example because of internal potency all the devotees in vrindavan who are with krishna they are thinking oh krishna is not god he is our friend right so that is internal forget krishna and when we forget krishna we can nicely do all the sins we can do wrong activities we can do all the nonsense things because if we remember krishna then very difficult to do nonsense then we will be like no 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 this is not good all right so that's about okay so i think we exceeded the time limit anybody wants to make any final points before we conclude any questions comments on any final points um quick question okay so um just by asking to please help me get out of this forgetfulness he he will like give you mercy and he will help you get you, like get you out of that mercy right yeah the answer you'll get to know when you start chanting how much are you chanting now um i'm chanting a lot like i mean i'm not doing rounds like maybe when i'm washing my hands i'm chanting hari krishna or when i am brushing my hair i'm chanting hari krishna or i'm looking in the mirror or drinking water something like stuff like that yeah that is very good but that's not enough that is not counted as rounds so you have to take beats and you have to sit in one place give 10 minutes and say intensely and chant to krishna okay you have to start doing and lot of chanting you will not get any answer even if you are so make it a point either start today or tomorrow take a beat if you don't have beat then let me know take some counter do something by which you can count from your mother she has beat so take from her mm-hmm. use her beat okay. and chant on those there are 108 beats every single beat to chant krishna I'm sorry my so things are my computer is glitching. Can't hear you properly. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. So every single bead you have to recite this whole mantra and listen to it very attentively and pray to Krishna. No other thing. No washing and is no thinking, no doing anything. Just focus hearing each word. What you have to do? Hare krishna hari krishna hari ram hari ram 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 hari hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari and you start like this do it 108 times pray to krishna before starting krishna i'm starting it first time from the beads please help me so that i can chant it properly chant nicely and then chant on every mantra on every bead chant a full mantra like that chant 108 times and then we'll talk more tomorrow let us know how your experience goes okay yeah okay thank you tomorrow is anyway saturday and day after tomorrow is sunday okay before anybody ends here so if you remember last week we decided that tomorrow we'll do the mangal aarti in the morning so everybody remember yes. we are going yes, to chant tomorrow 6:30 okay. uh, eastern standard time so those who are in central time it will be 5:30 for you so we'll get together and then <clears throat> we will do aarti and then after aarti we'll do bhagavatam and we'll also do a little 
you know some we'll try to play some games so if devotees can join tomorrow 6:30 we'll try to conclude by 10:30 or you know before that so <laughs> it will be a good experience we'll chant together we'll do aarti together we'll have dance we'll have you know some different uh, songs maybe and we'll end it okay so like 6:30 a.m. or p.m. 6:30 a.m. okay okay guruji we have here also mangal aarti so oh, maybe what time yeah, same time guruji 5:30 5:00. i think it will be 6:30 there okay okay nice nice yeah so if possible i'll think either of I, i maybe i'll join or maybe i'll not because one of the aarti i'll attend so you are blessed anyways okay great thank you very Just much thank you prabhu ji yes thank you mother so whoever can join will be very nice we'll uh, continue so so I, i'll put the whole schedule in the group in few more minutes i just wanted to let everybody know here and then you will know what we are doing at what time all right thank you very much we'll end it here shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shila prabhu ka jai okay मंचा कल्पतरु वैष्णव वे आई ना पावने भी वैष्णव भी हो नमः वैष्णव भी हो नमः श्री प्रभात की जय हरे कृष्णा